This is the What's in the Bag Founder Series Minimal Golf, Episode 1. I'm Sam Golden. I'm the CEO and founder of Minimal Golf. We make these super modern, lightweight, techie golf bags. If you want to know more about the golf bag, the best resource is our website, minimalgolf.com. I will talk a little bit about the features of the bag today, but primarily, I'm going to focus on what I play and why. And I'm going to start with the irons because I think they're probably the most interesting part of my bag. Um, and that's because I play the Adele single length irons. They've kind of been made popular by Bryson DeChambeau, but a lot of players over the years have been playing something similar to single length. Even if they weren't playing the whole set single length, they were tweaking their clubs. And I'll tell you why I started playing single length. Um, in about, about 10 years ago, and about like five years into my full-time playing career, I, and I'd been coaching for 10 years, I kind of just realized, or, or through the, the use of launch monitors and golf simulators, I realized that the launch angle is the largest contributing factor in the distance that a ball is going to go on a wedge. And so for me, I've got, I'm 5'11 in height, I've got a 5'8 wingspan, and for me, reaching down and getting into position to hit a standard 35 and a half inch sand wedge or lob wedge um, always felt a little bit challenging for me. It always felt like I had to do like extra work and really fight hard to stay in my posture. So when I was playing and I found out that the launch angle was the most, con the greatest contributing factor in distance with the wedges, I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just make all of my wedges the same length and bump them up a little bit so they're like all pitching wedge length. And I actually went as far as to go to nine iron length with all my wedges. And then I just bent my lofts on my clubs to get the launch angle that I wanted. And I, it was really easy on a simulator, you can just hit like 20 balls and find out what your average carry distance is. And so I just went through my bag and I got everything to about nine iron length and I hit my wedges and just tweaked the lofts of those clubs to get the gaps I wanted. So then eight years later, single length clubs start becoming popular and um, I'm good friends with the guys at Adele. I think they do amazing work. Uh, we actually did a collaboration with our bat our bags with their clubs or with their brand. And I said, hey guys, I'd love to get a set of single length clubs. Told them my specs I played and the very first ball I hit when I got my clubs, I was like, wow, this is like done. I never have to get another set of golf clubs. The reason I say that is because I don't play as much as I used to. I definitely don't practice as much as I used to. And so for me, having a consistent length club just makes the whole thing so much easier. So I would definitely look into single length clubs if you're possibly taller or if you know you have a shorter wingspan. Um, and possibly even if you're shorter, I think they could be a benefit to someone who's a little bit shorter. Finding the club that fits, like the length club that fits your body type and your swing, and then building your set around that versus just going with what industry standards are and what they're kind of selling you at golf stores. So I play 56 sand wedge uh, through gap wedge, pitching wedge, uh, nine, eight, seven, six, five iron. I stop at five iron because I'm kind of optimized. It's kind of crazy. You can see like the five iron and the sandwich are the, are the same length. I, I'm optimized for my club head speed and my launch angle to go the farthest with five iron. I carry five iron about 210 and I carry six iron 200 and, and so on down through the bag. And so the four iron, it launches just a little bit too low for the swing speed I get with that set. I have seven iron length, single length clubs for me to really get a lot of value out of it. So I just stop at five iron and then I have, I've had this in the bag since I played. I think this is a, one of the best hybrids in the world if you could find one, Vega VU04. Vega just makes really, really good quality clubs and um, they, they sponsored me for a little bit when I was playing. I got this club made and it's with the Addis, is that how you say it? Addis shaft? I don't really even know, but it's a, it's a Mamiya shaft. I have the 100 gram and it's stiff and I have it tipped two inches. So my hybrid is actually like four, but my three hybrid is actually like a between five and four iron length. And the reason I did that is because I wanted this thing to play really stiff, but I wanted this 100 gram shaft and I wanted a length that could control. And I carry this about 230 to 250 off a tee. Then, from there, I go to my driver, which you might be shocked. Oh, I have these cool Puebla head covers if you're interested in the head cover. Uh, this company called Puebla Golf. They make these cool head covers and they got a good mission, so you can find them somewhere, Instagram, online. But you might be shocked to see that I'm playing a Big Bertha Alpha driver from 2014. Um, for those of you who know this shaft head combo, 
It is the lowest spinning, flattest launching driver probably ever made, uh, modern driver. It is so low spinning and so flat. I play this, the Fubuki stock, I, I got this from the tour truck, but it's the, it's a Fubuki stock shaft. It's the one they made for this club. And I play it in 60 grams extra stiff. It's also an inch short. So this is 44 and a quarter. I think 45 and a quarter was the standard or maybe 45 and a half. This is 44 and a quarter inches long. That also takes some spin off. Um, I've, got it, I've got a nine degree head and I've got it turned down one degree. And the reason I have that is because I like to maintain my impact alignments as long as possible through impact. And I also like to get my upper center, my sternum behind the ball at impact so I can get an upward angle of attack. Those few components combined get me like a nine to 10 degree launching ball that spins under 2000 and just goes miles. Like when I play with people, they're like, how Sam, how, how do you hit the, how'd that ball go that far? It's not even me. It's just how'd that ball go that far. And the reason is because I'm super optimized with my launch angle and my spin rate for the ball speed that I can create. So that's the driver. Um, you could probably find one of these for like, a couple hundred bucks on a used marketplace and it'd be an awesome investment if you get the shaft that matches your swing. Finally, as far as clubs go, I, um, I met these guys, these two Canadian guys about three years ago and they had, they were, they were tweaking and playing around with making a wooden putter. And they reached out to me because a friend of theirs told them that I'd probably be able to help them with like maybe even just answering the question, would a wooden putter be viable? Um, so they called me up and they said, we found this wooden putter in our garage, we used it, it feels really good, it actually works. Do you think wooden putters would be a thing? Because if so, one of the guys is a former skate shop owner um, and the other guy is a woodworker. So they were like, we could start a golf brand. They're super golf addicts. And I was like, well, you could, but it needs to be, you need to make a putter that's not just for like, the CEO's wall, you know? You need to make a putter that people could actually use and would want to use. Don't just make a novelty item. And they were like, well, what does that mean? And I was like, well, fortunately, I've got a lot of years of club fitting and putter fitting and putter use and coaching. I can tell you what a really great putter would look like and, and what the lie angle needs to be and the loft and the head shape. And so I helped them design this putter. This is the model I like the best. It is the, it's basically, I mean, we call it the SAM model, but it's the O1. It's just basically a rectangle. It has zero degrees of loft and it has a 71 degree lie angle. And 71 is a pretty standard lie angle for a putter. It might be just a touch flat. I think that's a value add because most players have their toes up when they putt. Most people, regular golfers, have their toe up when they putt. Also, zero degrees of loft allows you to strike the ball with a little bit of a, not, not an upward putter head movement, but almost like an upward whole putter movement. So you're actually rolling the ball yourself. You're not relying on the loft to launch the ball in the air. And it, in this day and age, we really don't need much loft on the putter at impact. Greens are cut pretty short for the most part everywhere. And I think, well, we know, we tested it. You will get a faster, truer roll off this putter than you will off anything else in the market. And that's just backed up by data. So if you want to learn more about this putter, they're really sick. They're, they're totally customizable. You can get whatever ferrule you want, whatever shaft color, grip color, sole plates can be, can be monogrammed. Greenwood putters um, is where you could find these guys. And they're super dope. I think you're, check them out. If you can find one where you can practice, like try one. We've got like a dozen of them here at the shop in um, Minimal Golf Club in Redondo Beach. You should definitely try one because they feel insane. Distance control is better than anything I've ever used and just the whole promoting forward roll and, and the sensation that you get from wood versus metal, um, I think is really sick. So that's my bag. There's one more piece of equipment that I would, I would consider equipment, and that's the ball. I've been playing the Z-Star, I played the Z-Star XV uh, from Strixon for as long as they made it. Um, they sponsored me when I played and I felt like they were the lowest spinning ball off the driver and yet the highest spinning with the most spin around the greens. And that's a huge value to like anybody who plays golf. Um, you don't want to spin it off your driver really because you don't really want backspin and you don't really want side spin on your driver. Um, no matter how good you are, you really don't want to be curving the ball much with your driver. 
And, but you do want to have some spin around the green. So in a perfect world, I would just play the hardest, lowest spinning ball off my driver, and then from the fairway, I would play the spinniest ball because I want to control my trajectory and my spin rates. But this ball spins really well, or the Z-Star XV spins really well off of the irons and wedges and not much off the driver. So that's a great all-around ball for anybody who's, who's looking for consistency with the driver and spin with their wedges. But they just came out with the Z-Star Diamond, and to be honest, I don't really, I personally can't feel a difference. I haven't had it much on the simulator to see what the spin rates are, but it feels a lot like the Z-Star XV off the tee. Maybe just a little bit lower spin is what it feels like off the tee for me, but I haven't seen any lower spin off the wedges. So it's either higher spin or the same off the wedges. So I think this is a great ball for anybody who wants a performance based ball that spins kind of low off the driver and spins a lot off the wedges. So that's all of my equipment. I play a Srixon all leather glove. I think everybody should play an all leather glove. If you try an all leather glove and then you try a synthetic glove the next day, you're going to notice a difference. So if you can, I mean, you can get a good all leather glove for 15 or 20 bucks. Uh, I've got a Precision Pro rangefinder that does the job. I think these are a great uh, product for the price on the market. Um, and then I'm not wearing shoes today because I have a pretty nasty blister, but uh, I wear True Link, True Link Swear shoes. I've been wearing those for my, well, since 2010, since I found out about them. I think True Link Swear makes the, the highest performance golf shoe in that they don't have a big uh, heel and they don't have a ton of foam under your feet. So they allow your feet to fit like they would naturally onto the ground and spread out and allow you to, to create torque and power without having that big platform under your foot. So True Link Sports shoes are definitely, well, I will never play golf in another pair of shoes. And so that's it for my gear, my bag, my set, my, all my equipment. As far as the bag goes, I'll give you a quick rundown. The bag that we made, this is the MV2, minimal version two bag. It's our current model. It comes with the option for a tech kit, which will allow you to add on a Bluetooth speaker, a solar power bank here that's connected to charge the speaker, also a phone charger in this little phone pocket. Some of the other cool features, all of the pockets are magnetic, so you never have to worry about a broken zipper. There's a thermal pocket there where you can put ice, it has drain holes, and then finally, there's a pocket here on the side that allows you to film your swing, which I think is pretty critical if you wanna get better, or if you just wanna post videos to Instagram or TikTok, you can just slip your phone in there and film your swing. So that's it for my what's in the bag. That's everything I play and why. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video and someone will get back to you, possibly me. If you want to hear, if you want more information about the Minimal Golf Bag, go to minimalgolf.com. Greenwood putters for the putter, Puebla Golf for the head cover, Adel Golf for the irons, Strixon Golf for the balls. <laughs> Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, but that's it. That's my bag.